Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. Climate alarmists are always looking for correlations between bad weather and the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. A good example of this is the Climate Extremes Index from NOAA. They claim that in recent years, the percentage of the United States with unusually hot summer afternoon temperatures has been increasing to record levels. They want people to believe that U.S. summer afternoons are getting hotter due to an increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. They say that recent summers in the United States have been hotter than the Dust Bowl years of the 1930s when millions of climate refugees fled the Great Plains and moved to California. It's an interesting fantasy, but it's the exact opposite of reality. Their own data shows that the percentage of the United States with hot summer afternoon temperatures has been plummeting and is currently near record lows. As the amount of carbon dioxide has increased in the atmosphere, the percent of United States historical climatology network stations reaching 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius sometime during the summer has decreased sharply. Hot summer afternoon temperatures in the United States peaked when carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere were just over 300 parts per million. And not only has the aerial coverage of hot weather increased, but also the frequency of it. Prior to 60 years ago, 95 degree days were much more common in the United States, peaking in 1936. As the amount of carbon dioxide has increased in the atmosphere, the frequency of hot summer afternoons in the United States has declined sharply. The NOAA Climate Extremes Index is completely fraudulent and is an attempt to make a correlation which doesn't exist. But here is a very real correlation related to CO2 emissions. Twitter has been promoting their Chinese sponsors pretty hard recently. Today's story was, China has overtaken the U.S. as the world's richest country, a recent report revealed. The report said that global wealth has tripled in the last two decades and China accounted for almost one-third of this global increase. China's wealth has ballooned from a mere 7 trillion in the year 2000 to 120 trillion in the year 2020. And by comparison, the United States is not doing so well. The growth of the Chinese economy correlates very closely with their CO2 emissions. Manufacturing requires lots of energy, and as their manufacturing has increased, so has the amount of CO2 they're generating. Meanwhile, the United States is fighting an imaginary climate emergency, and our CO2 production is going down. Our government is doing tremendous damage by fighting an imaginary problem with imaginary solutions. Industrial output does seem to be the one thing which actually does correlate with CO2 emissions. Donald Trump explained how this works nine years ago. The concept of global warming was created by and for the Chinese in order to make U.S. manufacturing non-competitive. I don't think that China actually created global warming hysteria, but they've certainly taken full advantage of it. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're funding a lot of the current hysteria coming from the press and social media. Twitter is promoting a lot of pro-Chinese propaganda, and at the same time they're promoting lots of climate propaganda. This shouldn't surprise anybody. China is massively ramping up their usage of coal. At the same time, our Western leaders are behaving like complete lunatics, pretending like they can control the climate. Toto thinks that over the next few years, there's not going to be a lot of babies named either Boris or Brandon. You can visit Toto, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.